Okay, everybody ready? Block board commissioners, four out of five, not bad. I'm gonna call the meeting to order. Uh, today is Thursday, July. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Today is, what's the date today? The 7th or the 8th? 7th. 7th. Today's the 7th of July. Usually I know what day it is, but not always. 7th of July, and we are here for our regular Brewer District Commission uh, meeting. Um, just so you guys know, the next scheduled commission meeting, the business meeting is July 21st at 12 noon in this room. The next actual commission hearing is August 4th at 4 p.m. also in this room. Swearing in staff, Ms. Torbeck, you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and not the fifth truth? I do. Connie Torbeck, Assistant Historic Preservation Officer. Thank you very much, Madam. And I would like to, at this stage, have the commissioners introduce themselves. You're on. Oh. Deviani Kuranik here. Cynthia Hunt here. Matt Leisure here. Daniel Mather here. Great. Thank you guys very much. Um, and now we will move into our agenda. Connie, would you like to talk about the staff approvals? We have, yeah, two staff approvals uh, starting on page five. And if we could have a, a motion to approve those. Is so there any discussion or questions for Tom? Is there a move to, to move forward with those? I'll move to approve the staff approvals. Is there a second? I second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, ma'am. Motion passed. And then also a um, motion to approve the minutes from the June 2nd hearing. Thank you very much. Has everyone had a chance to review the minutes? Any feedback? Okay. We'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Thank you, Daniel. I second. All in favor? Aye. aye. Like to move so the first application is a continued application for 707 Short Street. And I think we have someone in attendance. Hello. Hello. Can I ask you to raise your right hands? Just so will you tell the truth, the whole truth, and not the myth the truth? I do. Thank you very much. Would you please introduce yourselves? I'm Larry First, President of Langstone Company. Thank you, Mr. First. John Grant. Langstone, tell me your last name again. Crandall. Crandall, thank yes. you, Mr. Crandall. Great. Connie? This <clears throat> application is to remove the existing chain link fencing and gate, which has already been completed as part of the Short Street Extension Project. Uh, install new vector chain link fence system and gate for submitted photos of site planning and product. Connie, action. Your mic is giving us a lot of feedback. Can oh, we do it? something with that? I think if you move it away slightly, you, can. you can't hear me. <laughs> can you guys hear? Okay. Okay. So uh, I'll just go over some comments from the June meeting. Um, that installation of chain link is directly against our guidelines. The proposed new gates looks very industrial. Uh, maybe the commission could get to a compromise solution, solution such as allowing the gates, but getting rid of the other chain link and have the rest of the fence sunk like a model. Uh, this is an unusual situation. Thinks it's appropriate to continue the application to get some guidance from other city staff. And um, asked if the standards for site improvements is geared mainly toward industrial properties. Uh, if it's not, it's any any, um, any property in any district. Thinks the look of the gates as shown in photos is wonderful in an aesthetic sense. Asked if the applicant is opposed to installing metal picket fencing, such as has been approved at other properties along Short Street. Um, it seems worth a try to discuss the issue with other city staff that have been involved with the project. And noticed, noted this is a challenging situation for, for the commission. Um, so the application was continued, as I noted, from the June 2nd BBC hearing to allow staff to communicate with Department of Public Service staff. Uh, no, resp no response has been received from DPS. Uh, the short street roadway improvement project was implemented in 2021 and includes a new road surface, curbing, sidewalks, and street trees. The project was in construction by October 2021, at which time the application and approval requirements were communicated to DPS staff. 
In May 2022, preparation for fence installation was observed and code enforcement staff contacted the property owner. An application, local site plan, and product information were submitted for June. Uh, still picket fencing for other properties, Long Shore Street Board approved in uh, approved by the commission in 2010. The Liberty Apartments, 2009, the Voter Control Plan Building, and 1996, 563 Shore Street. Recommend that need new permanent fencing along the right of way be consistent with applicable code and guidelines and with previously approved fencing style and materials. So we asked you several questions in the last meeting, one of which was connecting with DPS. I understand you have not yet received a response. We also asked you if Langstone had had any other applications oh, before uh, the commission. No, I, I checked our files. There were no, we had no file for um, the, the short street, current short street address or for the previous sycamore address. Okay. So no evidence of any prior activity. Okay, but on the DPS front, we have a guest here who can perhaps speak to. We don't have someone from DPS. No, but we have a guest from the Department of Development who can perhaps support from the city attorney's office. Right. Available if you have questions for you. Just for questions. So you don't have any kind of update for us. And if yeah. you, can you can you raise your right hand? I don't know. I, I have not testified. Okay. He's, All right. Yeah. Great. I Thank actually you. cannot testify. I'm, yeah. your, I'm your attorney. Even better. So I will not provide any information. So you don't have any information to provide to this person? Not a background All right. that I can speak on the record of. All right. Thank you. Okay. So do you all have new information to provide us? I, I, I did. Okay. And I, I set up a presentation. I have hard copies again. Yeah, I read some of that presentation. I just want to go on the record with one statement. Okay. Which is that um, our recollection of the meeting is slightly different from elements in your presentation, which is rational given that your presentation presents your point of view, and our job is to be as, as um, factual as we can be in our description. So it will not, I just want to note that the record is what's in the meeting minutes from the last meeting. Is okay. that fair? Okay. Sure. All right. Do you want to work on it? If you think there's valuable information, I think there are a couple pieces of useful yeah. information. In. Is that okay, Con? Yeah, it's already been emailed to the commission. See it now or? We have it. We have it. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I think the staff recognized some responsibility for us being in the position that we're in since we could have avoided this if we had had prior. I, that's the piece that we might disagree slightly with because I think that the develop, Department of Development sent over information and it did not somehow get processed. I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, but there's a gap. We processed by Langstone? No. Okay. Within the city. Okay. Okay. So we're splitting hairs, but I'm not, I'm not gonna okay. I'm not going to specifically say that. Okay. Okay. Um there was an attempt at DOD to make sure that we took care of your needs. Yeah. Okay, so understood. Yeah. Um graciously offered to attempt to find an acceptable solution. Right. Greatly appreciated. Right. Apparently there's no new news on that. No new news on that front, that's right. Um Recognition that we're a commercial property. Right. Been there for a long time. <laughs> um, that new fencing would not be required if the short sycamore connector hadn't gone through, which we never fought. Uh, okay. We had the fencing. Um, Jump in, do you guys want to answer any questions? Okay. All right. So I realize I'm talking to you. Yeah. Well, it, uh, it's interactive. Right? To um, some degree. So the parking lot, we have to talk about the parking lot, the city has an eight foot chain link fence with concertino wire on the top also, um, just down the street. <laughs> is that in the commission, in that in the district county? It is, is it temporary? It is, it is, you know, it, I, just, I, I can't speak to that really because, you know, I'm low on the rung of the ladder. Okay. If someone wanted to, I guess submit a 311 to get questions from whoever in the city would be responsible for that. The point being that yeah. does not be believe mean it's been blessed by the commission. Yeah. And my my guess is it's a temporary fence. Except that it's been there for multiple years and it sets precedent. Fair it's point. The you don't see it as a precedent since we haven't um, given any judgment. Okay. So we would have never known that. 
Maybe not. So we're seeking guidance on compromise. The rest of this is an idea of a compromise. Um, so I'd say, first of all, the gates are not a chain of fence. Um, so we had contemplated putting chain link in the gaps on the fence, mm -hmm. but we don't have to do that. So um, I'm sorry. So you're saying you could just put the gates up and no fence? Is that what you're saying? Correct. Mm -hmm. The primary my folks would dispute this with me, but I'm primarily concerned about a truck coming in with equipment that could load a lot of snow. So the gate is your real driver concept. It, That's absolutely. the thing that's most important to you. It's the most expensive component of the right. system, and it's something that uh, was custom made for us because of the width of the entry base. And they've already been delivered, as yes. we discussed. Yes, I, I had pictures of pictures here. Um, so it's. I think virtually impossible to negotiate a return to the vendor. For the gates, Correct. not for the fence itself. Correct. Right. Um, so if you did that, my question would be, what would you use to block a truck just driving over the curb and onto your property or out of your property? Well, that, that's the, that's becomes the next question. I, I don't, I mean, we I submitted pictures of a chain link fence at Fortress Obets that's got those metal slatting. I don't know whether that's sufficient to beautify it enough, the um, type of picket fencing that we we did research on a more decorative fence, and it's a lot more expensive. Okay. <laughs> We're managing to more expensive, and this is a six-figure expense for us, which is a lot of money for a company of our size. When it doesn't generate any revenue. Can I ask a question? Sure, of course. So. Am I correct that you just said that you would be fine with installing the gates that you already have, which I think there was some discussion at the last meeting that, uh, you know, the commission was kind of okay with the design of those or not? Right. Members somewhere. of the commission were more okay. Some are, yeah. <laughs> and not putting any fence up other than the gates? Well, the, the, him, I got to think through. Yes, I'd say first. The first answer to that is yes. The gates mean a lot. Right. Sure, someone can drive up over, but there are ways you to do that anywhere. Yeah, there are ways to prevent that. Um, so if you were to say we can't accept the chain link fence, I think I could negotiate a return of the fencing. Um, I didn't know that you hadn't yet tried to do that. Yes. Yeah. In your materials, right? And there may be a, a charge to do that. It wouldn't be the full right. Uh, um, so one of the alternatives would be for us to put uh, stone boulders, right? You know, in, in, they'd be in a sense inventory available for sale. But in general, they would, <laughs> yes, yeah, they're large enough. They would stay there, and we could replace them as we need to. Uh, Is there precedent? Well, for in, in general, uh, boulders. Oh, sorry, boulders. In the front of a building, in the front of the house, and they uh, definitely would not be allowed in the, the driveway. So, again, we have to. Right. It wouldn't be in the right. For a house, would not be appropriate uh, for the guidelines. Right. If it's, in my opinion, this is my opinion, but, uh, is that it's part of your inventory, as you're saying. Some are going to be there and they won't be there. It's not really a part of, of the landscape, you know. I, I I would not see any issue. I would say that it even needs approval. You know, place one here, place one right. there. Mm. I think we found a compromise. I think that's a good. I think yeah. that's like a remarkable compromise. Mm -hmm. Did the gates have chain link backing through? If I recall, but they don't now. Okay. The, we come. We come. They would have. We would have put them on uh, once they were installed. Which which would you have put on the chain fence onto the, the I know screen. which of the fences are you speaking of your new proposal or no the no this new proposal one? we wouldn't yeah we wouldn't we wouldn't okay. put it on. I think that I'm not a fan of the new proposal is anybody a fan of the new proposal that to me is more opaque than the original it's rough yeah all right so so let's let's take the new proposal off the list if that's okay with you this, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 of the I think this. what he's saying is the new new proposal is to not Chain link or that. Yeah, I understand. I understand oh. that. I'm just saying that I don't want to talk about this new 
dense option. If with that's okay with everybody. The one that you just showed, just a minute ago. Can you show it again? This one. Yeah. Okay. I think we're all solid that we don't think this is an improvement over the original. But for the sake of clarity, yes. on the gates themselves, yes. will there be chain link applied to them? Including what you say is not really chain link. Well, I think not putting chain link on it, which is what I'm proposing, right. makes it a not, not a chain link fix right. for gate. We're, right. So yes. we, yeah. we're all more open to that. Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah. So, yes. so we're talking about installing basically that but we see exact it. thing Correct. and calling it a day. Yep. Yeah. With boulders that you choose to prevent egress to well, access to the company. Boulders that they choose to. How they choose to lay out their inventory is their business. Yes, so long as it's not in the right of way. Correct. Yeah. Right. Do you need any information about like what the posts at the end look like, or you know how big those are, or whatever? I assume it's just HSS tubes tube tube stuck in the ground, steel tubes stuck in the ground. I assume. Is that the case? But will there be the black powdered? Yeah. Um, there's some heft to them. Yeah. Because yeah. there would the have to be. Wait, right? right? Yeah. Are they square? Well, we don't have a picture of those yet, right? The round, round, powder coated black post, yes. And is it about a foot in diameter? Uh, no, I think they're six or eight inches. So oh, great. That's okay. yeah, that makes sense. I mean, to clarify my comments from the previous <laughs> month, I mean, I don't think they're wonderful, <laughs> but they do at least don't look like chain fence and look a little bit more like the picket fence, right? Right. And picket fencing has been approved in the past. So I think the case in this commissioner's opinion is successful. And we also know it's a gigantic, uh, it's like a gigantic space that has to yeah. be covered. Right. And that you need a certain amount of heft to make sure that it works. Yeah. And it feels to me like this is the least intrusive. Totally agree. Of the heft that would be required to make it work. And I think the two, the support, vertical support structures on either end and perhaps in the middle are just going to blend right into what we see in the screen. Right. So what would we, you're here for a uh, real review or concept? There's, is real. the real. So what would we need, Connie, to make the, okay, so I, I can wait to you. So we were just discussing the, the um, span. Some that would slide and some swing. Some, like both yeah. in each case. So you are, guys have both are there the tracks time. that they slide on or? Yeah, that's, that's, that fence right there is a slide. Because of the distance of the opening of the. So where it's really big, you have to slide it. Yeah. And where it's not as big, you can right. put it. So one side of the street has that on the, I want to say our business. Between the trees. Yeah. Our building side is those gates. There's a tire. The inventory side, which is the east side, would be the swing gates. Can you show the diagram, please? If so you, if you if you want to, you can just approach that and show. So so here's your slide gates. This one, this one, and then there's one down here. Because the the openings to the property for the semis go in and out. So they, these right here swing gates. There's one down here. So how does the one in the upper right slide? This one. Uh huh. Is this way. Okay. And there's enough room to do that. This opening is that wide. All right. So there's a there's a hill right here that it actually goes behind. Okay. And we don't want really to see it. And those would be open at <laughs> hot during the day or all day? All day. Okay. Things will be. So long as you'll be able to monitor it. So what else would we need to approve the gates? Um, I don't think we really need anything else. Uh, maybe a, a photo of what that post looks like, if, you know, um, where those would be located. But I think we have most of them we need. Sure. I think we may have pictures. Okay, great. I did want to say we have, we're feeling a sense of urgency. <laughs> the city told us in an email today 
that the Board of the County that they were going to remove the temporary fencing by the end of July. Right. Absolutely. Connie, I, and I talked about earlier, she briefed me. I was going to ask our attorney if he could talk to the DPS attorney to ask them to put that off for a month if we thought we needed it. It would help. I, I don't, we don't, because we don't have anything to tell the fencing company yet. Right. We don't know what. Even if we approve today, which I think we're close to, it still would help you to, to have it stretch out to the end of August. And we would do our best to, to get the fencing company there. They've done the whole. Do I need to ask for September? We want to ask for September just off the bat. What's best for you? What? For the, I think you're less likely to get that. Well, for the I'm also not asking for what we need, and then we'll back we'll back into so what they can do. Yeah. So I, I, they're anxious to get this work done. The fencing company or the or the, the fencing company. Okay, I'm talking about DPS. Yeah, I think. I think by the end of August, we should have everything done. Is it an appropriate ask of you to send a note to the DPS or talk to the DPS guys to say, see if we can push back the demolition of the fence into, of their existing temporary fence until the end of August instead of July? Of say what? I can be, I can inquire on behalf of the commission. That's what we're hoping. Yes. That work for everybody? Yeah. Yeah. That's all we're going to get. Yeah. Thank you. Nice. Is this the post? Yeah, yeah. go ahead and bring it over. Yeah. Do we have that? I love it. You or? It would be for my files. We can show them. Go ahead. Okay. You want to go this way? Yeah. Yeah. Can we go back to the fence? The image? So it doesn't have the ornament of the stuff? It doesn't have the guy. Oop. Uh, there's, it's got more metal. Oh, okay. okay. It's on the on this drive. Right. Do we prefer the ornamental vertical slots? Okay. I I think the, I think we'll it wasn't engineered for the ornamental slides, yeah. and it's already been prior fitted. It's Great so answer. <laughs> <laughs> so no, we would not prefer them. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Simple, then. Oh yeah. Do you want to see this to make sure I'll you're okay? Call me to call okay? I think the posts go along with the fence. It's the same system, right? right. So it it's just right. It's, it's what we're looking at. It's the same basic. Thing. Is there a finial on top of them, or some kind of cap, or is it just place? Yeah, round, probably a round cap. Okay. Just think we're okay. Yeah. All right. Do we need anything else, Matt? No. Someone like to make a motion. I will make a motion to approve. Again. Would you like to add some conditions to that? I think I, the only condition I would say is that if the arrangement of the inventory doesn't work out in the future, please come back. Would you like to say that we are approving the gates? We are approving the gates. Yeah, okay. Without, I would make a motion to approve the gates without, without any chain, link. chain link fence. Right. But if in the future, if this approach is not working, we would strongly encourage Langstone to come. That we would require. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I think we require Langstone to come back. If there's anything, if the, if the inventory approach does not meet your needs. Okay. Are there any amendments to that? Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for coming with your creativity hat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. We appreciate it very much. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, it's it was second. Right. I did. And now you know you're a formal member of the Benedict <laughs> <laughs> And we'll hope to see you. We will expect to see you if there's any changes, other changes we can talk about. Well, we need any custom cuts over for your project. So. <laughs> I have some. So offer to give them a deal. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay, thank you, gentlemen and madam. Okay, the next item is we're now moving to conceptual applications. Yes. BD 22 07 003 477 South Front Street. Mr. Rosenthal. Being shoved up here on your own, huh? 
Be nice, please. We're always nice. <laughs> okay, will you raise your right hand, please? I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you very much. Ms. Torbeck? Okay. Um, the next vision for a new edition was conceptually reviewed a, a few times November 2021, January 6, March 3, and April 7, 2022. Uh, the SHPO and NPS are in the process of reviewing uh, the current and proposed design. The, the design has continued to move uh, toward a more relaxed design as encouraged by the Commission. The new addition is sufficiently separated from the historic building physically, and the design uh, provides a visual distinction between old and new. Um, more information has been provided regarding the look and feel of the sunken patio area and the stone materials for the base veneer of the pavilion and pedestal papers. Uh, the brick addition is to include fiber cement panels, large expanses of opaque spandrel glass, and clear vision glass. Uh, brick and stone portal at, north, at the northeast corner to include aluminum frame glass skyline. The portal entrance to include a metal fence, fence and decorative metal millwork, and the metal stairs provide access to a sunken garden. Provide comment for conceptual review, no action required. So fundamentally, the uh, the design has not uh, changed a lot since you last saw it. There have just been some adjustments to address the comments from um, both the State Historic Preservation Office and the National Park Service. Can you bring your microphone a little closer, please? Yeah, sure. Thank you. So some of the concerns that we heard back from the uh, Preservation Office were about the proportion of the windows and the amount of glass, in particular the glass um, box at the top that's the uh, rooftop bar area they asked for additional separation so in this design we have um, we proposed moving the east wall that um, bar area a little bit to the west and it's approximately four feet and that just gives a sense of kind of relief from the main facade and uh, cuts down a little bit of visibility of the past. Uh, they were you able to maintain the inside Footprint square footage. It had to shrink a little bit. Okay. So what we've what we've done there is just move that whole wall over. It's a little bit smaller, but it's still um, a space up there for the the bar, and it gives a little bit more area then to the rooftop space. So another two top or so we fit in that corner. Um, the proportions on the windows have been adjusted to have more of a vertical pane look. Um, the the widths of the windows have not really changed. Um, we have added a large canopy to the south in order to provide cover for folks that are using the cafe in the event of rain, just being able to have patio and chairs out there and be uh, safe from the inclement weather. Um, the, uh, the windows themselves, they continue to step down and sort of follow the slope of the sidewalk. Um, we've evened out some of the proportions on the south elevation. Uh, they were a little asymmetrical before. And you can see the the left edge, there's that gray bar maintaining that sort of gasket appearance that's more apparent in the elevations. Uh, we've toned down the amount of uh, bubbles on the decorative grill work. Um, that was one of the comments um, that it was maybe too much ornament. And um, so we, we scaled it back and changed the aperture of the, uh, of the circumference of the right. They didn't say get rid of the bubbles, they just said to turn it down? They prefer we get rid of it. We um, we are trying to keep some ornamental aspects here. Um, we've, we're proposing adding a little bit of a diagonal frit on the, the glass that's a, at the, um, the rooftop bar there in order to give it just a different set off appearance so that what you're seeing there, that um, diamond shape it kind of harkens back to one of the earlier renderings, and uh, we think that it will help um, with the reading of it being an all glass box up there. So it kind of knocks that down a little bit for uh, the purposes of our preservation. Next slide, please. This so is, I'm sorry, what will that be like? I didn't notice that when I looked at these. If you're looking at the, so it, it shows up well, on that elevation, this one as well. Um, all right. It's just, a thin ceramic frit line and, um, and it's sort of a diamond pattern. Okay, so it's actually applied to the glass? It is. 
only to the exterior? It's not something like a simul simulated divided life thing? Or it's it's not. It, it, it goes on the face. It, actually, if you look at this building right here, there's the seal on the glass it's, uh, at the uh, office adjacent to us. Um, it'd be on the number three face, so it's not the outside face of the glass, but um, you know, the glass is sort of the so same. Closer, closer to the front. Okay. It, it's on the inside. It's just a line of ceramic coating that is always bought to so it doesn't look like it has dimension. It's just not really. Just okay. since then, long lens. It wouldn't be confused with Malian. Mm -hmm. um, the spandrel that you're seeing there has just sort of the darker gray. It's more about differentiating, um, and that's approximately where the the floor lot level is. And that that's what we're going to around. Um, really, no change in the. The garden a lot of than some of the proportions of the, the glazing and we wanted to keep more of the the monumental glass that scale down low where it isn't as visible from the street and um, might not offend the sensibilities from the preservation standpoint next song please um this is just kind of showing the space up there uh, on top of the roof not bar it's not got furniture or anything but just to, in order to understand when you're up on that level, what you may be able to um, see looking around will be planters, there'll be other um, furnishings to enrich the space, but that's sort of the volume and the overall view. Next slide. Just a little bit of a close up on the development of the portal. Uh, this is mostly about showing how scaling back that valence and the environmental um, impacts the design. Uh, it's not a big change at all. Uh, next slide. We did some investigations of what it's like in that space. Uh, we made some adjustments. The one thing um, that I don't think you've seen before is that the last, let's say, five browsers or so coming out of that portal are now in the garden itself. And that gives us more head height as you're coming in there and kind of opens up that experience and also has more of a sense of arrival as you come into that socking garden area. That gives us a, a an intermediate landing on the way up, and honestly, I think a great sort of photo op spot. And we kind of toned down some of the uh, the articulation in the lay light as well with the skylight, still holding on to some of the uh, the same geometry, but just fewer um, circles to let more light in. Really, just try to and that's it a up. window up above you, so it's skylight. Guarding from the elements. Correct. Are there aspects of the staircase that are open to the elements in the winter? The last five I can tell, but what about the it's it's got the cover directly above it, but the sides are open. Okay. The stairs are rendered in this oh, wood. Is it? They will not be wood. It says composite. What's the right treads are composite? Same thing for the floor? Uh, our final material selection there uh, will be part of what we see the certificate of appropriateness for now. I think this was just a, a concept. Um, Are we worried about the openness to the elements for the winter access? As long as it's covered and maintained, okay. it's only a liability to the owner. Right. Uh, it's on their property. Um, we asked for it. <laughs> I know. I hadn't thought about the winter. Okay. And that shows the development of that landing condition there. Will the stairs be enclosed like you showed there so you can't walk under the stairs? Is that is that what I'm reading? Yes. Okay. We see that as an art opportunity. Either. I was just going to say that. Yeah, that, that space is. Yeah. Including your photo op space. Right. Have something great behind that. How are you feeling about the bubbles? Uh, a little sad that they're scaled back, but um, I'm, I'm still pushing to, to have them included. I think that it is a it's a nice feature for something that um, doesn't have a whole lot of expression otherwise, and it also ties into um, some elements of the landscape design that we're exploring right now, and would be a real shame to lose. So, I have some questions, sort of general. Um, We've gone through a number of rounds of conceptual and totally get it, but the renderings have only come up to a point and the development of the images that we're seeing have only come to a point. 
is that I'm wondering about I'm wondering about the approach because you're waiting for the approval from the Fed to go forward, so you don't really want to invest too much in the visual visualization. Is that correct? Partially, it's also a matter of scheduling that when we submitted for um, requesting comments, um, we were delayed by about three or four weeks hearing things back. So giving a go to uh, a render didn't happen. Um, honestly, th this slide deck, uh, I'm not sure. There's There should be another one, an alternate scheme here that we studied and other visualizations that I don't I guess, and where I'm going with it is, we once talked about a lot of detailed work, mm -hmm. and it's hard to read in these images, mm -hmm. even in the elevations where you, know, you could say that our drawn arch architectural detailed elevations could show all of that brick work. So I'm just wondering, is that yet to come? A lot of it is already like in the elevations themselves. We've shown um, some of the reliefs. So yeah, if you go back to the are you mostly thinking about the patio space? Then? I think about the whole, the whole okay. thing. Okay. Moving forward, forward to just the enlarged. So there, um, you know, we're, we're showing the, the soldier course at the top and the, uh, the step in there and then the inset. Um, there's not much more detail proposed beyond that. Okay. For the building itself, there was the sort of the underground that we talked about, and um, there is notes about the Flemish bond, mm -hmm. yeah. how that articulation would be different than the other part. Don't get me wrong. I think it's, this is appropriate for consensual, but I think moving forward and the uh, I also think beyond conceptual, I think it would be good to see those things. So there might there, there should be two packages that are more up to date than what you saw that have better renderings in them. Then what we have shown yeah, tonight. I've got it. I just remember. Because we also have an alternate material pal that we'd okay. like to gotcha. propose. So speaking of materials, on the, on these images, it, yes. I'm wondering about the fiber cement because that's a wide variety of materials applied or products applied. So where do you think that would land? Just that gasket. But uh, what type of fiber cement are we talking about? There it is. Got that building. Um, this explains though why when I read it, I kept on saying, I don't understand what's different about it. <laughs> Hopefully. Okay. Yeah, this is okay, it's got the dark. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you. I have to share it. Don't just like, go through it. Or... Yeah, so here you're seeing sorry. the the rendering. It's a little bit more developed now. Um, but albeit it's a little dark in the on the screen right now, but. Uh, this is sort of the next step up before I say a full commercial rendering. And one of the issues that you can see is that the the metal work that's on the, the fence post there is rendering is white. It's just a reflection issue. Um, so we wanted to clean that up. And you can see the circles on the um, metal vein. Mental veins are coming out white as well. So Which just, is not your intent. It is not. It okay. would be black. So those two materials are just rendered incorrectly. It's okay. um, but yeah. We'll, now you see the shift from the, the sort of the long draw. Um, here we go. So um, just a little bit more uh, kind of fully rendered. You're not seeing the detail of the Flemish bond on the darker brick that mm -hmm. creates the eyebrow, but that's the intent. And then the rest would be running bond. That's true to color, you think, of the brick? It's close, but you all saw the samples. And I'd say that this isn't a one for one copy of this and, feels very plummy to me and the the photos of the materials i think are the final slide okay um well and then the alternate scene. sorry yeah so that's all right so i mean i was gonna get you out of messed up your reveal so those were those are more the actual proposed colors that it's got a bit of a range to it yeah and it's more red to me than a bricky to me than 
that for me. So the the alternate material palette is one where um, we'd like to explore a um, just a darker material palette and hotter contrast. Um, nothing about the geometry changes. It's simply a uh, a black brick. Um, so it, we can just go through the the, re the renderings here. And That's brick, though. The the brick. Brick. The, is that accurate to the mix of the black brick that you're talking? There's it, like white in it. Um, that is actually an artificial look. Um, the you'll see in the material palette on this one Sorry. that there's a uh, basically a mat and a um, almost polished look one Got for the eyebrow. So you made it look plummy just to make the darker one look good, right? I want to go back to see the the second um, ballot or whatever. We have this that slide you just did. That's the best slide of the darker palette. There's actually a material um, slide. Okay, okay. Oh. so that's coming. Yeah. All right. It reads interestingly um, ghost like to me in the sense that if we were trying to go for it, if I was trying to go for a glass model before, this is closer to a more abstract, non historic. Will it beds buy it? Probably not. Just curious. What do you guys think? I like this one. I like it too. Yeah. What do you think? I like them both. Yeah, same here. I, so the the darker brick, so some of the I've seen it. It's all, when it's it almost has a glazed look. Is this that kind of brick where it, you know, it, the color is dark when you see it on a screen, but in real life it's got a reflective nature almost. Is that the accent brick? Is that so okay? The bottom yeah. one you yeah. can see in the I guess the upper left um, brick itself. That face is kind of a little lighter and it's shinier because of that um, glaze. Yeah. So coming back to that, I was not I'm, I was thinking something similar to like a, a reader panel. Okay. Um, Sounds good. And honestly, um, when the sun comes, that might end up being a metal panel instead of right. like a, a gray which, gasket. For which component on this There's So between the brick, their new brick building and the existing brick building, mm -hmm. there's basically a slot of space that's covered by this fiber cement right. panel. So that stuff is Sometimes, you know, there's James Hardy board, the mm -hmm. cheapest you can get it, but mm -hmm. they're talking about using more appropriate commercial material. Okay. Which is thick and durable. And we said that maybe the metal and we're okay with that? Yes, yeah. that's correct. Actually, I was surprised with the brake metal between the windows wasn't called out as metal panel, but I'm getting into the weeds and I don't need to be. It's more abstract to me, it's more modern to me. Which I applaud. Yes, that's but that's just one commissioner's opinion. Yeah, I, I think either way makes. I think the massing and the, the amount of glass on the building makes it feel right. So, yeah. you know, the material it's dark enough either way to be contrasting with the existing buildings. So yes, I think there's some flexibility there. Because from my perspective, yeah, I, I think they're both great. The side of the room thinks. Yeah, better. I think the dark contrast <laughs> is, is yeah. really. But either would be either yeah. would be acceptable probably if you could get the best to buy this. I see. Yeah. Because yeah. to me, it makes it a statement that it is not an historic exactly. building, and it's not intended to be an historic building. It's intended to be a really wonderful marriage of old and new, in a celebratory way in mind. And this doesn't get in the way as much. Yeah. Is that what you wanted me to say? You look like you're happy with her. <laughs> I've just already gotten initial responses from the preservation office. And, and they said no. Ah. Well, shouldn't show us that stuff. 
So do you think the bubbles are going to go through? I can't say. If they had to go away, I think that the little pavilion could just be an exercise in brick detailing, and that's where I was going originally. Mm. You just made it extremely fussy. It, would, it could be the thing to make that thing stand out. My two cents. So you mentioned a mural on that stair. Well, the art opportunity. Art, 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 I'm sorry. Yes. yes. Do, do, the, uh, do, the, do the feds approve that? Or is that something you can kind of... It could be a later thing, right? It can be a later thing. It all, it, it all depends on what it is and how it's applied, whether or not it's a permanent installation, like if it's built in or if it is a, an applied graphic. So I think what we were looking for with that, at yeah. least it's there's something that happens there that's fun. And so if, if the bubbles are out, I can live with that as long as there's something interesting that happens in that space. So that's, I think that was what we're getting at from the beginning. I think that gets to the commercial rendering. Right. It was gonna like fill in all that stuff for us. Right. And, yeah. And it did strike me that the, the, the um, arched windows could be used in some kind of motif way. If we couldn't get the bubbles through, maybe sell it as a historic reference. I don't know. Um, I know we have a disconnect between us and the stay in the beds. I don't know which group about how close to an historic look it should be and how how similar it should be. You know, I think our guidelines err on the side of it should be really differentiated. Yeah. And others, I think the others perhaps do not. The difficult part is that this commission is the commission that's supposed to have. I know that. This is the strongest say about what it's done. But as we've said before, we don't want to put their funding at risk. So. But it's fair to say, as far as the dark brick that we're supporting, yes, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. So yes. if that is helpful. Maybe if you want a letter, we're happy to write one. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that helps you, but. Um, yeah, they are citing standard nine that they feel that the uh, contrast is um, too great. So the additions should be made subservient and compatible to the historic building. And the, the, I think the, the reading of this is that it's more dominating. Because it might just be the rendering too. So to me, it, 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 makes, it, makes, it, it makes it disappear almost. Yeah, yeah it's subservient because yeah. it's, <laughs> but that's, that's this right. yeah. view. I think the view is the rendering. This render. This is what they've seen. Yes. This is not the right thing to show them if you're trying to make it disappear. Yeah. Yeah. I think we can dress it up with landscaping and some entourage and show them and the one that's more of the big building. Than the and the, building. the interior of the building will help, you know, just showing light coming through. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yes. And the material that is the brick in this image looks like like a stick stone. I feel confident that with the feedback and the iterations of all I've seen, the siting of the building, the discussions about sort of the level of solid and glass and what's been seen, uh, that we are ready to proceed into uh, a more final design. So that the next time I see you all, I will be asking for a certificate of appropriateness. So I appreciate all of you. Thank you. Good there. Yeah. Cool. We appreciate your diligence. I did want to, I don't think your question was quite that answer. So I know we're off the clock, but I, I wanted to share. You all, oops, I think you said a long time ago, like the garden space and the initial review. Yeah, yeah. those yeah. staff renderings. Yeah. So we need to get there just from a marketing point of view, too. Yeah. So we'll right. see that. So okay. Good. Thank you. Thanks for waiting. Take care, y'all. Thank you. Hey, one second, I got to get back to the agenda. Okay, item BD-22-07-004-841-843 South Front Street. Gentlemen, please join us. Can you raise your right hand? I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you very much. Would you like to reintroduce yourselves to us? Sir, my name is John Iman. I'm with MA Architects. John? I am Dunder, then I'm with Stonehenge. 
representing Whittier Park. Great. And yeah. are your uh, compatriots? Uh, yeah, uh, I'll let them introduce themselves. Good. Giovanni, obviously, for all this. We Right. Thank you guys very much. We appreciate that. Ani, floor is yours. <laughs> So the application's demolition renovation and the new addition was conceptually reviewed at the August 5, 2021, March 3, and April 7, 2022 hearings. Uh, the June 23rd BDC business meeting comments include um, it is important for the commission to understand the grading along the south side of the 835 South Brown property, uh, provide any records regarding maintenance that has been completed on the bird house at 835 South Front Street. By the information as to why rehabilitation of the existing bird house would constitute a hardship. The proposed project includes, par includes partial demolition of uh, the north wall and roof of the circa 1917 contributing warehouse building, complete demolition of the associated contributing brick garage, complete demolition of the circa 1880 contributing bird house, and complete demolition of the associated non contributing rear decks and the concrete block garage. Um, HPO staff does not support demolition of the two story brick section of the house at 835 South Front Street. It is a contributing building providing a buffer between an existing one and a half story brick cottage and the proposed apartments, which are described as market rate. Uh, applicant has indicated that preserving the entire house is economically unfeasible. In part to the condition of the rear conditions, but the commission has not opposed demolition of those rear conditions. Uh, approval of any partial or complete demolition requires definite plans for reuse of the site prior to approval and demolition. And the commission has expressed regret for approving demolition uh, on another project aside before reviewing approval and reviewing and approving a final plan for replacement. Uh, documentary evidence to show economic hardship that uh, is listed on the staff report and has been provided to the uh, to the applicant that hasn't been submitted in the yet so maybe that can be for the next company uh -huh. but again this can include uh, demolition renovation of the existing breaking the industrial building at 66 to 68 was Whittier, um and new construction of existing hospital. And this was marked as a conceptual. Thank you, Melvin. So I think um, to just address the questions initially, I think I can talk about the grading issue, and maybe Doug can talk about the maintenance and the other um, sure the economic hardship issue. So first, I wanted to clarify the plan that we had submitted last time had a scaling issue on it. So our building was too big, and consequently, it was taking over too much of the site. And we actually was actually shown to be over the property line that we don't control. So that was an error on our part. I didn't catch it. Our civil engineer didn't catch it. So this plan is the, it's that's not the right point. Is that was is that the one that was originally submitted here this last week? Let me go into the into the archive. Yeah, this is what was doing two commissions in the same day. <laughs> But that was the mistake that that was the one that I aired on because uh, again with your submission this was the last one I kept on thinking what is different so <laughs> yeah it would help me if it is different. That's true. Is that the right one? Yeah. Can you make the, the scrap paper yeah. larger, please? Yeah, I'm trying to make it scrap Yeah, that, that's correct. Because the because we're short of the property line, we're not over the property line. So where it looked like to the Can north, there was a huge side yard. Okay, good. Yeah, great. Thank you. Sure. So that. That appendage to the right end on the north side there was over that property line. That's why I was making. You mean that. the little? Yes. Okay. The, the bump out in the building. Um, so that's why I was making the rest of the site look like it was a huge side yard, which we don't have because that was on the property that we don't control. Okay. So we only control the first property north of the Jones Heel first. Okay. 
So this includes, this assumes you have demolished the historic. Correct. Yes. yes. So, so just to be clear, the CV Estates LLC is not your property. That's the house immediately adjacent. Correct. Yeah. Okay. The, it's just the Jones Hill and one parcel. That's that's the that's what we control. And the the blank space uh, after the bump out mm -hmm. is where we had the questions before, right? right. How big is that and what's going there? It's 15 feet and right now it's a, it's it's intended to be pretty much a side yard. You know, we would like that or right. Yeah. yeah, because when the building goes in there, that north wall of the building um, is, is, is basically going to act as a retaining wall and the property to the north uh, with that has got that concrete block structure. It pretty much sits right on the southern property line. Right. So we need to have some separation between the two buildings from a building code standpoint. Um, and we don't really feel it appropriate to crowd. I mean, technically, we probably could go up to like six feet, but then you know, that's going to really negatively affect that property to the point. Help us understand the bump out though. Why is that there? I'm sorry, I don't remember. Uh, it's part of the entry and it's part of the feature. You know, we've got to get the curb cut in there uh, for the driveway. If you go back to the one of the other plans. Yeah, there we go. So it's part of the uh, stair and elevator board. Because our, our curb cut is restricted to where the curb cut is currently located. Um, so that bump out is. is, is um, so with the house next to it, um, it, you said it's right on the southern part of the property. So are they like, is where are they with respect to the bump out? Um, well, there's kind of two parts of that building because it was added on to uh, at some point in time with the concrete block structure, which is that art studio. Mm -hmm. So it's where it offsets. Uh, kind of about a third of the way or a quarter of the way. So back. you try to leave them a 15 foot marker all the way through? Um, well, if you see, if I, maybe can I point over here? Maybe it would be easier. Yeah. Okay. So this is this is open space right here. Right. The edge of the building, and then they're building jogs, and this is where that additional is right in there. So you can see it's pretty much right on the property line. Right. So while we are crowding this with the R4 area in terms of the property line, there's still a sufficient green space between the two buildings. And then and sufficient to you is what? Uh, 10 to 12 feet. Okay. But and what about the, the where the curve where you curve to the new space? No, right next to the bump out up here. No, all the way to the right. Right there. What about there? Yeah, that's about 10 feet. Overall, between the two buildings. I got overall. that, but when you take the diagonal, is corner. it 10 feet there? When you take the corner? Corner to corner. Oh, well, sorry. Right there. Is that 10 feet? Oh, that's going to be a little bit more than that. That's probably 12 or 15 feet in that ballpark. And that will be, all that space will be level uh, ground at the level of the house as it exists. Yeah, because the slope and the slopes actually are on right here. So this property sits up high. Mm -hmm. And and so the idea would be this would all get filled in so that it pretty much marries up with the grade that's on this property line. You know, obviously we've got to be delicate about how we do that, uh, but the intent is that it's not a depression sloping downward towards our building. You know, we need to control the water drainage. You know, on that side of the site. So, are you going to do that? Well, we haven't gotten quite that far to be perfectly honest, but you know, I would see potentially having some sort of small swale in here. We're probably possibly having to put some yard drains in there to pick up. It will go to the rear of the property. Go into the storm system. So, so again, we we need to have some separation here. There's there is a, a little bit of variability in terms of what that is. You know, it's a little bit on the generous side. Truthfully, I'd like to bump it up at like about five feet, but um, you know, that's that's about as close as I think we can really come comfortably from the coast. Right now, it's fifteen. Right now it's 20. 20, okay. So I'd actually like to get it down to 15. So not take it to five. I, no, I missed it. No, it's just not realistic. Yeah, good. Agree with that. Yeah, it would be five. <laughs> yes, yeah. got it. Yeah, that was a good clear. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's the way the code, the code goes in, like eight person five feet, you guys know, separation of buildings. So I, I should know this and I don't. What's the requirement to communicate this to the next door neighbor? There would be the requirement. I mean, uh, legally, just you know, we we try to encourage applicants to 
when there's a big project to um, communicate with all neighbors, including the neighbor across the street that we were worried about the garage lighting for. Yeah, I mean, I, so I think if there are variances, then those then the notification is sent out for that. Right. But there would have to be a specific variance. Would taking down the historic property be a variance? So I thought. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. So um, and I'm not nitpicky. I'm trying to just make sure we understand this properly. But like the you know your parking spaces are 18 feet deep, and they look wider than that space. So that space on this drawing at least is I'm guessing 10 feet on the drawing. Between the building wall and the uh, neighboring property to the north. Yeah. So, and I'm just asking that just right. to make sure I, I we're on the same page. It's intended to be 15. Right? Okay. Okay. And, I, and I'm not trying to. Yeah. No, I'm just, just so. And then the um, the massing is five stories all the way across there. Right. Okay. So, so that entire northern edge is the five story. So, what they will see, story one and story two, is apartments. On this side of the building. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Because remember, a garage is basically the existing finished floor. So, the first floor will be roughly thirteen to fourteen feet above that existing finished floor elevation. Which will be how? What relationship to the entry grade of the house next door? Um, I don't think we actually have that great information. It would be slightly below. Finished floor of this would be slightly above where our first floor of residential would be. And then moving away from the historic house, which is admittedly not in great shape. To looking at a gigantic set of apartments with total burden and 15 feet <laughs> of yeah. Well, does the neighboring property have open to the places? That's what I don't know. Can you show us the neighboring property south 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 of south? I think that's where the south of south. Yeah. I mean, it would make sense, but actually, yeah, it's hard to see. So completely involved. Well, you know, Because we have we have that in It's the cottage, right? Oh, well, yeah, that's the that's yeah. the property, that's the tan cottage. By the way, thanks for your facility with us. Sure. Yeah, the laptop. We appreciate it. Uh, well, Google it says use Chrome. Uh, the, we want to put a man on the ground in the alley. <laughs> I'm always not going to get thrilled. Hope to view, but then it says 3D. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know if there's a window on the art studio building. I could be wrong, though. That's yeah. already approximate to the Bansard roof thing. Yeah. What about in front of the front? Yeah. In front in the of the actual on the actual cottage. Yeah. Sure. Hard to tell the tree. Can't tell. There, I, um, I believe there are windows in that sure. on that south elevation of the cottage. All of you. Ah, there you go. Yeah, the front door's back there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's a front. So you got the front door, then you'd have more space than they have now, but a much more significant bird. Right, mm -hmm. and then the question is, what's behind on that facade? Still better. 
you zoom in on that a little bit, we might be able to see. Just kind of looking down at it. Hey, why can't I get there? Sometimes it doesn't have that option available. The tilt, the yeah, 3D. The tilt, yeah. Yeah. Or, or why? It might not be anything to tell No, so it should look like it. Do you have any idea of that? I can't get it to tilt. The, oh, okay. I think you have to be in Google Earth to do yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't. Can you zoom in on that anymore? That's it. So that's a question that we have that maybe could be included in the next packet, right? Is that, right. Where, is yes. that where we're going with that? Yes. Yeah, I think a site section, including the neighboring house, would be really helpful. And then also going the other way, going through Whittier and going to the other house, because last time Matt brought up an issue of Exiting Perfect. the property. Yes, yeah. yes. Headlights going into the neighboring house. So I think understanding the levels of everything would help. With encouraging you guys to reach out to the neighbors. Yeah. Yeah. Frankly. Do they get notification of these meetings? No, not no, officially. Posted on the website if they decided to look at that. It's not so they they most people that that most people don't know to do it. It's only send out oh, what we don't know. There it is. What was it? Uh, globe view. Oh. I had to go over here. Globe view. And I messed it up. There it is. So, it's not going to be able But yeah, the trees. And they have the skylights. Which we'll be able to look into from the new, from the higher level apartments. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wonder if they have, do they have windows on the north side? Who wouldn't mind spinning around? As an art studio, it makes sense to. Yeah, no. I don't actually know. So the art studio is in back. Is there? Is it a family house in the front? Do we know? I think someone lives there. Okay. I mean, we had a. Things were actually. Application. We're actually we're improving bad. the condition for that house to the more. Are you going back to the house you're trying to demolish? Is that what you're talking about? No, no, no. The, 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 where the uh, art studio is? Yeah. You know, the, the brown garage, the, there's virtually no gap there between the two. So when that garage structure comes out, it's going to actually make that better than what it is. Yeah, today. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I could buy that for the art studio yeah. part, but not the house. Not your house is what I'm worried about. Yeah, yeah. The, um, I don't think it's any different than what it is today. I agree. I don't think it's any closer. I think. What Matt maybe trying to say is that it's there's more stories. Yes. You know, it's that's it's what a, I'm worried about. It's a very different condition. Right. I mean, to be one about because in one case you're very private, and in the next case you've got gas and thousands looking at you. It's, it's a historic home that has been there for hundred years. That was your neighbor, for, and now it's five story building. Which I don't have a problem with the height elsewhere on the site. To be clear, but. That's a major change. Well, we did a we did a nice job with you guys of backing off of, on the front to try to make it not be so. Obvious. I don't think we thought about the north facade the same way because we were focused on the historic house. Right. I'm not showing the unit of the building. I don't know how accurate that is. It's showing all these offices and units. Just. So obviously we can't require to reach out to the neighbors, but we can strongly suggest. Is that fair, Connie? Well, fine. We can't require reaching out to the neighbors, but we can strongly suggest. Yeah. What would we want to try to, to I mean, what would be the purpose of reaching out to the neighbor? What would we informing want? them, just to inform them so that they can come to the meeting if they wish to, to register whatever concerns they have. So it'd be kind of like a little bit of a marketing call. To be crass. Um, and on the historic house, is that what? So, in, what else is different? Let's go there. Uh, as far as the reapplication, yeah, nothing is any different from the uh, actual design aspect of things. Uh, we provided some additional information and the grading information, and 
And there are some pictures there that I submitted previously that show that site condition. We've seen them all before. Yeah, so but it just kind of reinforces the grade issues on that side of the site. Um, and then uh, I think there's a couple other questions regarding the, the maintenance and the economic hardship aspect that Doug's been working on. Okay. Right. And as it relates to maintenance, um, when uh, Brad Conus, who is the person responsible for construction and maintenance, unfortunately, was on vacation last week, and um, we have a problem in that he seems to have way too much control over knowledge. Um, so um, he is back, and I will submit that for him. We're not trying to fold anything. We are keeping the building secure. We're maintaining kind of the grass, the lawns, and everything. Um, and my question to him is, I, having not been involved with this since the time of this acquired so a couple of years ago, was any other um, improvements or uh, extensive maintenance items that were performed prior to that, so that before I tell you, hey, that's it, I want to make sure that that's it. So we'll get that to you. As it relates to economic hardship, and there's another question about this, like maybe you can let Jim speak to this. I, my approach to that is, I understand it's there. I don't know that we're there for me to, to say economic hardship. Because what you have supplied so far is insufficient. In what sense? There's a specific sort of model that you need to follow. Let me suggest you spend some time with Connie to figure that out. I sent that to them just recently. Right. I, I, you didn't send that to me last week, but I, I think as it gets to the point where it's economic, uh, with the uh, which I did, I figured that out and I went through that. I I would like to at least present the case. I mean, that's why you know we've had V three prepare the letter that we sent a supplemental information. And basically, aside from economics, our access to the site is constrained to Front Street, and just by to be able by to, the to get two zoning, cars by the zoning. I'm sorry, by the zoning organization. By no, by the traffic. Okay. Same. All right. Yeah, the email is in there from the traffic that right. said, "Hey, I forgot." And told us to put it as far to the north as possible. And also, what they told us, which nothing against the city, but they're never going to give me anything 100 percent definitive as to whether they're ever going to approve an alley or not. But um, I had to bring it to their attention that this was there. I mean, it is not in their capital approval report. So our access is restricted to Front Street. So just from a traffic safety perspective, um, and the fact that I need to have in and out in a width, minimum width, um, and for us to keep the wall that exists today, I'm not really safe. Over. Yeah, it, it's um, you know trying to retain both is. Is you know, both being the, the warehouse factory walls and the historic structure to the north is severely restricted by the fact that we can only have that one point as your, our access. Yes, yeah, your uh, position has not changed on that. So that's a, well, that's it's an existing condition. I mean, so it, it, you know, there's not much that we can change about it, to be honest. Um, well, you see, it sounds, am I, am I correct in saying that you don't think? That yeah, the economic hardship is is really the approach, but uh, an unusual circumstance. More. But let me jump yeah. in. Yeah, we if you can be slow. Yeah. yeah. Yes. You want chair? <laughs> no, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to here's somebody to tell the truth, the whole truth, and answer the truth. Right. Good. Thank you. Okay. Um, look, it's. We've tried to do some research and it's looking for a situation where you have a literal possibility to say one feature without farming another feature on a site where they're both contributing. Okay. And we have not found, I don't even tell you, you know, there aren't ample court cases, you know, under under our statute or what you have in Cleveland or whatever. But I mean, we, we, we do have a situation where it looks like it's, it may literally be just physically impossible to accommodate, you know, modern ingress, egress, or the city's telling us to do without, you know, without harming one or the other buildings. And I'm sure no board wants to 
you know, get into the hierarchy of what what buildings more value than enough, than another. You you want to value all contributing structures, but I don't know if there's something realistic, and it's not because we've overloaded the site. But I, you know, I believe that if we wanted to make heels in the warehouse and have the workers live in the back, I think I think we'd be facing the same constraint. You know, it's 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 not it, it's it's just to have cars go in and out there. What was there might have worked years in the past. So we we will you know. When the time comes, put in the information. Likely, you know uh, that it is a big financial impact on the project. I think what Connie's suggesting is you have two paths. You could do economic hardship, or you could do the other considerations. Unusual, unusual. Yeah, unusual compelling circumstances. So I think you should spend some time with her and decide how you wish to present your case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's two questions that I still have. One, it's it's not super clear to me that Bank Street is not available for your use in the email that's in here. So I just want to make that 100% clear because because mm -hmm. the way it was stated in the email, the way I read it is that we're not sure if we're going to do anything with it. We may or we may not. So so I'm just asking that question again to be 100% clear. And then the second part, and, of, and let me be clear about that. Yeah. That is the best solution for the egress, uh, for the for the access to the site in and out, to be able to go in one and out the other without question from our standpoint. I think we all agree with that. Is that fair? I agree. Yeah. So we want that as the solution if we can get it. So I don't know the best way to get there. Is there anything we can do to help? Seeing what the relationship with right. Can our attorney help us with that? Okay. All right. So we'll try. We'll see what we can do now. Right. Wait. If, if I could speak, uh, Commissioner Fraser. Um, as I stated before, as much as I can get in writing from the city. Unfortunately, I was a part of that call. John was a part of that call. Okay. I think we walked away from that call thinking there's a better chance of me hitting the lottery than them improving an Angel Bank Street. However, when it came time to commit to that uh, in, in something in a written form, I received what I received. So I understand your concern. It was and, ambiguous. I'm sorry? Which was ambiguous. It was, and that was intentional for right. someone who gets paid every two weeks or how you pay with the city to make sure they're not on the wrong side of something political. Fair. Okay, item two. So then, okay, so what is the minimum width if we if we absolutely had no other choice for the ingress and egress on Front Street? Can we squeeze that in? So you're allowed to do 20 feet in Columbus, both, both directions. So can we really squeeze that down as much as possible? I don't know the answer to that. That's That's up to you guys, but I just, you know, if that's driving the demolition of the house, I, I'm not there yet. I just, you know, so that's why I'm asking these questions. Okay, John, do you want to speak to them? Uh, sure. You, it, you know, from a drive lane standpoint, you're correct. 20 foot. You know, with this, it's a little bit different because you're going up against an existing brick wall. Right. So I don't think you want your drive lane to be the wall itself. Otherwise, we're going to be bumping off that all the time. Plus, we're going to want some level of pedestrian access to that. So I think a, a reasonable ingress egress width for the roadway would be 22 feet, and then an additional four at the minimum, maybe five would be better on the south side of the drive between the drive lane and the existing brick build. So if you look at it from that perspective, you know we're there at the 27, 28 feet. And uh, the other thing, to keep in mind, this assumes 27, 28 and a half. It's like 27.52 feet or something like that. That's yeah. close enough. Yeah. Um, do you accept that? And then keep well, I, I guess why do we need to have pedestrian sidewalk in that access point? Why couldn't we come off of Front Street and walk right into the garage? Sure. You know, have or or have the the house or whatever it is be the pedestrian access. And I'm again, I'm trying to ask those questions just to make sure we exhausted mm -hmm. every right right. Um, I, I think you're still going to want some sort of buffer there, even if it's like a two foot buffer. I just, I just don't personally feel comfortable of having a drive lane that literally 
the edge of the face of the building is the drive line. I feel like there's got to be some level of projection there. Because otherwise, you know, come with that. I mean, it's a slope. And, you know, you got to take yeah. that into account with weather and so on. And then keep in mind also that um, if you go to the site compliance plan, you know, the alleyway to the west, it, behind our property, the Jones Field property proper is only 20 feet. It's only at that northern property that it actually jumps to the 40 foot streetway road width. So they're, you know, trying to get uh, an, an ingress egress at that northeast uh, is just extremely difficult given the grade conditions. We can go back to those pictures and where that warehouse, but not warehouse, the art studios where that grade's coming down towards Bank Street. You would end up with some, again, massive retaining walls there to try to preserve that site and hold the northern property up at its existing condition, you know, to avoid having to go off onto their property and do more work. So, it did, and then keep in mind that from where that road, Bank Street, uh, uh, changes, you know, from 40 to 50, it's unimproved for the next three to four parcels north. It's basically a dirt road. And I think one of the other commissioners or maybe one of the residents made a comment about somebody's been bringing dirt into that area on the western side of Bank Street, and they basically have made their own parking lot. And I, 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 they bootlegged it in, and they could say it that way, but um, they're taking advantage of an unimproved alleyway to different parking. Was that above the driveway? Yeah. Technically, no, it would be at uh, the uh, Blue Ridge Yard parcel. They're west of uh, the narrow right of way that we have behind our front. No, so like oh, it is. So they no, would be, be, okay, sorry. Yeah. To be to creating be, a parking yeah, space. Yeah, we'll create a parking space. And then it's possible we need it from Yeah. It's yeah. 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 that property. I guess what just what I'm struggling with it's a city alley, but we can't use it for this project to access the yeah. property. Just I, Good. I'm just struggling with that, and I understand all the grading issues. But yeah, I guess going on Matt's point, if you had use of the alley, got use of the alley, would you, as a development team, prefer to use front as ingress and back street as egress, or would you still prefer to use both on front street? I think you do need both. We, we've looked at it, you know, 15 different ways and we've struggled mightily trying to get access in that western side over there. So to be clear, you would prefer to have both ingress and egress on Front Street. Why is that? Well, that's the address of the site. And that's a logical way that people would enter into the site. Enter, enter makes sense to me. Yeah. It's exit that I'm thinking does not have to be on Front Street. And it's not a hotel. I mean, and I think there's know. value to that right. to the people across the street, especially. Right. And I'm not worried about traffic on, you know, on Bank Street, right? That's, right. I'm like, we're not talking about that many cars a day, really. That's why we're all saying we like going in on front and out on banks. In, uh, you know, if Bank Street was a real street, it'd be much easier, without a doubt. Yeah. But if you zoom in on there, see go a little bit further right there you can see where the roadway stops mm -hmm. and you can see it's pretty much just a, a gravel drive from that point all the way around we, we we've had that conversation so we do remember at least so again is, is this a question as to why this is not being maintained as a as a true alley even for the properties that use it for their access and i'm i'm just yeah it's, we're, we're getting stuck as a commission trying to we can yeah. try to approach and see if we do respond. Say yeah. again. So we can try to approach. I'm and thinking that's a good idea. And even if you know we we don't use that, that still should be it, it, yes, it, it should be. Yeah. <laughs> we should make the point. Yeah. So I think that we would I think we all feel good about approach it. We're still struggling with the historic house, as you might imagine. Oh, I understand. Yeah. I understand. And I, I think what we'll do is uh, put together a study that gets to address the question in the minimum with given, you know, because right now, um, 
for good, bad, or indifferent, the triage we've been playing is that um, we've kind of taken a hierarchy. We are committed to preserving. One thing, too, I noticed, Dave, hey, just reading when you read the minutes, um, we are making 30% of this project affordable. It's tranche from 60 to 100% of median. Um, and uh, we, we've had that commitment out there for some time and have met with the city about it. But the, um, you know, in, in preserving the, the perimeter wall and the six story warehouse. You get it. Yeah. Yeah. We and, that. and unfortunately, and we it's just about like, that. So yeah. what I, I think what I need to do is, you know, we'll, 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 we'll look at it and say, here, here's what we feel the minimum is. You know, here's where we are. My paramedic person, I'm going to tell you, I'm into that house. I mean, with just the square footage. I'm sorry. And I think what you, I think what I heard you say was that the house would have to be torn down in order yes. to meet the needs. Well, we will show that the minimum. more in a more illustrative okay. way. Thank you. Even if I were to say it's the, the bare minimum, if I, for whatever reason, if Bank Street were viable, if I constricted that down to one lane, I believe I'm still into some part of that house. But on the back or on the front? front. I mean, my access point, I only have so much distance from that property line to the edge of the wall. And also keep in mind, if we're preserving that wall, there's a lot we have to do to keep that from. So help me understand that little bump out stuff that was the elevator and everything else. Does that have to be right there? I will defer to John for that. I'm he's, wondering if that can I'm an economist, not an architect, so he's the better person. Um, does it have to be? I'm sure there's alternative solutions. That's kind sure. of what I was thinking. Which could solve that. Perhaps. Yeah, right. We don't know. So this is the, this is, this dashed line is the existing. Right. So what is the dash line to the south? Is, is that the existing garage? So what I'm getting at is the wall of the warehouse is not that's the correct. That's location. actually a great line. You follow that line, that, that dash line to the left, you can see it kind of wraps around on the Bank Street side. So, so I, but I think south of the 45 foot. Is that the warehouse? See how it's labeled there? So, and I'm, again, I'm just trying to yeah. clarify what we're looking at. Yeah. But we, no. we can be 100%. Yeah, that arrow to the north is not right. Yeah. The arrow to the, the second arrow pointing north needs to go to the dark line, the dotted line. That one there, yeah. But we're struggling with that given, given the existing house and garage. It doesn't seem to make sense to us. Can you just take a look at that? Sure. Yeah, okay. Sure. So, so for the next go around, I think just clarifying that, but having context on these drawings also, so we know so we can really see it. In addition to the twenty foot question mark, yeah, absolutely. And more photos of that whole area, including the you know the bank. And the well, they have those in there. Huh? We have those pictures. Isn't there are a lot of photos along the entire bank? There's probably three or four. I mean, we can look at look. They're right here. So that way, go back one. How is that? That's out of the So there's a separate set. Right. That's what I was doing. So it's like, okay. We, we know, by the way, you guys were working hard on this. We know you've yeah. been with us multiple times. We appreciate your attempt to try to, and, and to, to yeah. answer our questions and hang in there. To be from my perspective, like I'm good with 80% of this. It's just those couple issues. Yeah. So good. just, just I think that's want to be clear. I think that's generally true. In fact, I think we're excited about yes. all of them. So, so I'm, you know, pushing on just two of those key things, and that's good. Do you have any questions? And if you know you want to go the hardship route or the other considerations route, 
but it's going to depend in part on these conclusions. I do. But it's going to depend on some of these other conclusions and what we can really see. Yeah. Great. Anything else we'd like to offer in feedback? Madam, yep. gentlemen? Okay. Thank you for Thanks hanging for in. Time. Thanks for hanging Thank in. You. Thank you. Thank you. We, we know you're working hard. Okay, so uh, I didn't put it on the agenda, but that doesn't really matter. Would you like to make uh, nominations for uh, chair and vice chair tonight? You could either just do that tonight or you could go ahead and I mean, okay, we got one person needs to leave. Yeah. You know, do it at the business meeting? Yeah. Pardon me? Can we do it at the business meeting? Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, you can't do it at the, 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 the next you meeting. Next meeting. Yeah, Sorry. you could uh, make the nominations at the business meeting and then vote at the hearing. So, okay. Do you have anybody you want to know? You? No. For the chair? Yeah. Do you yeah. have anybody? Okay. 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 Thank you all. Yeah. <laughs> you can vote on that right now. Yeah. <laughs> you can vote on that. Yeah, it's like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, can we just vote on it really quickly? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you run that? Have, have you? Do you accept? Yes. The nomination. Yes. Nominated I'm you. honored. Who nominated you? Okay. Okay. Um, and can we have a vote on? Oh, um, all in favor? I the time for chair. Aye. Aye. Um, are you voting? Yes. And would someone like to nominate? I'd like to nominate Matt for vice chair. Accept. Nice job. <laughs> yes. And vote. All, uh, is there all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Anything else we need to do? I will just say that we have a new chair, Cynthia. Thank you very much, Vice Chair. Yeah. Yeah. No, by the way, I'm not going to be here for the next three months. No, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Great. We'll see you yeah. Okay. We'll adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Thank, oh, you. thank you. Thank you. Take care, you guys. Bye. Nice job. <laughs> well, don't say it like you're so happy. <laughs> I, I, I just can't. I can't hide it. <laughs>